Good morning on this Ash Wednesday morning. A reading from Matthew chapter 6. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who is in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves come in and break and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And a short meditation after that scripture reading. You know, there is an age old saying, you can't take it with you. It's a saying to help us understand that whatever we have in personal assets doesn't really matter. Because when we pass from this life into the next, those physical items won't get us into heaven nor will we need them. On this Ash Wednesday, I was reading this gospel lesson and thinking about how it fits with this spiritual holiday, as well as how it fits in with our Lenten season. This passage tells us that we should not disfigure our faces or let other people know how we feel or what we are doing. So it begs the question, then why? Should we put a very public, very prominent ash-designed cross on our foreheads so that wherever we go, whatever we do for today, people will see what we are doing? This seems, <laughs> seems strange as we try to wrestle with the idea of being quiet as well as sharing our faith. We are called as Christians to share the love that God has with us. But so many times, and in passages like this from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is telling his disciples not to go and tell people about what has happened. Jesus, Jesus will tell us to make disciples of all nations, but, but Jesus also will tell those who have seen a miracle to be quiet and not tell anyone. This Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the time of self-reflection, a time of quiet contemplation. I think that this passage is chosen for this holiday because we are supposed to recognize the dichotomy of our very public symbol on our heads versus the very quiet solitude of the season. 
when I was growing up, I was never one to go and get ashes on my forehead. Always, almost always attended the Ash Wednesday evening service, but was never a person to go up and get ashes on my head. But I want to invite you to come to Epler's between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. today. You can receive ashes, the imposition of ashes, through our drive through um, ashes to go uh, type event. Or maybe you would like to attend the worship service at 7 p.m. at St. John Grenance in Leesport tonight. Or maybe you are watching this and you're a member of another church. Maybe you are a, a person of the Catholic faith. And no matter where you go, we all need to come back together and realize that this is just the beginning. It is a way for us to publicly show our faith, but it is also the beginning of the time that is described here in Matthew. Because you see, we have the crosses on our heads today, but we're not going to continue with that. If we're hungry from fasting, we are not going to continue to pray loudly at the street corners. Because this season of Lent is, is quiet. It's somber. It's a time to reflect. And then, we get to be loud and proud. And on Easter morning, then we get to celebrate. We get to shout. We get to be bold. We get to sing our praise to God. So we must begin this season of Lent in a somber mood. Reflecting while also making that mark on our heads. Because from dust we have come. And to dust, we shall return. We recognize the finality of life here on earth and we meditate. We discern, we pray throughout Lent until we get to that glorious Easter morning. And then we no longer concern ourselves with the frailty of our earthly life but we celebrate with the resurrected Christ, the joy, the grace that is that everlasting gift, that everlasting heavenly life. So if you find time today to receive ashes on your forehead or maybe just on the back of your hand, and that for you is a sign of your recognition of the start of this Lenten season or if you just take some time to reflect on your own, maybe read some scripture, do what you need to do to begin this Lenten season. And I want you to know that to dust you have come, and to dust you shall return. And then we're all going to get together on Easter morning. And we're going to celebrate our resurrected Christ. May you have a blessed Ash Wednesday. And may this Lenten season be filled with meaningful reflection. Amen.